Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. I thought today I needed to get outside and do a garden tour for the end of the month of June. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this every month so you can kind of see what the progress is and kind of keeps a video log of what's growing when. Uh, so you can take a look at how things are going. We're going to start off today in the vegetable garden. So here we go. The vegetable garden this year is doing really well. We've got the peppers over there in that one bed. There's probably about eight to ten pepper plants growing over there. There's our squash and zucchini bed with tons of massive foliage on this squash here. Well, we got lots of yellow squash. Some of it's ready to be picked. Looking pretty good. But let's go back over here to the peppers. Check out those serrano peppers right over here. We've got two jalapeno peppers over there. Those are from seed I saved in 2013. They're growing really nicely. And then over there on the back, we've got some brown jalapenos, which are starting to produce now. They're a little bit further behind. And up over here, we've got some sweet peppers. This was supposed to be an orange bell from seed that I saved. But as you can tell, the fruit is not coming out in a bell shape. So I'm hoping it's more like a Marconi or something like that, which is more of a uh, an ox horn type of bell pepper or sweet pepper. Now over here in the garden bed, what I've done with the peppers this year, I'll show you this, I'm going to come around to this side here, is I've underplanted the pepper beds with sweet potatoes. So when the peppers are all done and we're ready to clear out the pepper plants, we'll be able to harvest the sweet potatoes. And they're not going to use all of the same nutrients, so they'll kind of complement each other very well on that. And these here are the mini stuffing peppers we got quite a few of those coming along and we got a ton on this i need to get this one staked up it's it's gotten so heavy it's fallen over so i'm just using some of the bamboo stakes to tie these up on the pepper plants you don't need a really high stake to tie up the pepper plant though so we'll come back around over here again and look at the squash and the zucchini they're doing really well look at those beautiful i need to pick that one tonight so they're doing great. Cucumbers are not doing so well. I'm just dealing with old seed, I think, and they're just not wanting to grow. So a little more difficult this year on those cucumbers. Here is our other bed with peppers in it. And we've got a combination of different things. We've got some bell peppers here. These did come out like bell peppers. And we've got several different things. Some are paprika. We've got some hot peppers, some chili peppers. And then on the end of the bed, we've got the dinosaur kale growing and some huge chard over here. We're not actually using that. I need to cut that down and move it out. Over here on the other side, the potatoes look like we probably have a couple more weeks on them before we're going to be able to harvest anything. Now you can harvest potatoes early if you want to and get new potatoes with it. Those are the smaller version. But the longer you leave it, the better they're going to be, the bigger they're going to be. So you just basically uh, wait until the foliage all dies back and then wait about two weeks after that for the maximum uh, potato yield on that type of potato. And if you ever see your potatoes starting to emerge from the soil surface, that's when you need to cover. You don't really have to cover them if they're not. Not all potatoes do that. In fact, these potatoes here are a purple potato. I may have some Yukon gold potato in there and some russet potatoes and red potatoes. So it's just kind of a mix, but um, none of them are coming up above the soil surface. You never want to eat a green potato because those are actually still poisonous. So that's why you cover it so that the sunlight doesn't create that greenness in the potato itself. And this is a red Russian kale, which is just massive. These leaves, let me just check that out. That is huge. And they're doing really well. We need to harvest some of that and eat it really soon. So I'm going to come over here now and our mustard has gotten massive and it's ready to start yeah maybe not ready just yet but if i leave it for probably another week it'll be ready to go we'll be able to oh look at that you see that little bug that is a harle harlequin beetle and they've, they're kind of neat looking they've got these painted shells but they're like squash bugs and things they will come and eat your brassicas and other plants so they're not really good plants to have around, even though they look really cool. So let's skip over that and come over here. 
And I'll show you this. This is our cantaloupe, which is doing really well. It's got a lot of holes in it right now. I'm not really worried about those holes. You can take some of that without too much difficulty. It's just if it starts to decimate the whole plant, then we got a problem. And then over here, forgive a few of these weeds because we need to get in here with the hoe. But we've got some watermelons growing. And our atomic orange corn. Check that out. Now this atomic orange corn grows three to five feet tall, which it is approximately that right now. And over here you can see it's already going to tassels and we've got silks down here. Each one of those silks will eventually become a single kernel of corn. That's what receives the pollen and the tassels are what produce the pollen. Uh, corn, of course, is extremely wind pollinated. So you wanna plant it in blocks and that's just to kind of maximize the amount of pollen that gets spread around. So over here is some of the tomato jungle we've got there. And this one is just massive right now. That's about as tall as I am. And over here is a little orange. We are getting some good looking tomatoes. Unfortunately, they're still all green, so we're waiting, trying to see what's gonna come along on that. And our basil is looking great. We gotta go through and pinch off the basil. Of course, I did a uh, video on how to propagate basil the other day, and we're starting to see roots on the basil cuttings. So that's cool. I don't have that for this video, but I'll do an update on that eventually. And then over here, we've got all this asparagus that has just popped up and is, it's really a beautiful plant when you let it go to seed like this. If you check this out, these are the seeds for the asparagus, which will eventually turn red. And then you could plant those if you wanted to grow some seed for asparagus. But this plant is just, it's really taken off, which is kind of crazy for the time of year. I'm excited about this over here. Now these are some really large tomatillos and quite a few. I've got two plants of this. One I've got staked up in a tomato cage. The other I did not. I wish I had because this one's getting really tons of fruit. The other one's getting good fruit, but they're not as big and everything. I've got a few tomato plants I need to get over here and build the trellis for. I, I've been behind on that. So we'll come over here. You see some of the yellow mustard flowers there. And we've got a pink jazz tomato coming right there. Some more flowers up at the top of the plant. That one down there is not doing so hot. And this is a Cherokee purple, but it was not doing well. It was kind of a spindly little plant when I planted it. So I wasn't real sure what it would do. Over here, the blueberries tomatoes are looking real good. You can tell where they've got a little bit of that blue coloration on the top, so the shoulders of the tomato itself. And so they'll kind of have a really dark purple and bluish look on the top of the red tomatoes. So it's a cool tomato to try. Scooting around over here, we got more cherries coming in. They're looking good. And then right here, looks like a big boy. This is from seed that I had from like 2007 or 2008, 2010, somewhere in that time period, but really old seed. And I was just curious if it was still viable. And I actually got two plants out of it. We've harvested some garlic by now, although we still have some other garlic that probably could be harvested. It was a little small, so we'll probably use some of it and then replant more of it later in late summer, early fall, so we can get it growing again for next year. And then, Tons of tomatoes over here. I'm just really excited. The tomatoes are looking really good this year. So, and I know I've talked about it in a couple other videos before, but hey, I'm a tomato grower. I like doing that. So the garden's growing really well. Next thing I'm gonna need to do is we're producing cilantro seed here. So as soon as this is mature, it's not quite ready yet. It's started to brown, but we need it to kind of dry out a bit. And then we can pull these and then harvest the seed and we can either use that as coriander or save it and then grow more cilantro seed later uh, or plant more cilantro from seed later. So this is a cool little insect. This is a green lacewing. And if you ever see this in your garden, you want to leave it alone and let it do its thing. It is a good bug. Its larvae eat a lot of things like aphids and it's definitely a positive thing in your garden. 
So just let him hop around and fly around wherever he wants to go because he is definitely going to help you out. And you'd like to encourage a lot of those by bringing in things that are um, flowers and stuff that they that beneficial insects can come in and and just really enjoy. So definitely one thing to watch out for is check out those lace wings. They're beautiful little insects and I love what they do in the garden. And here are our beans. They are not doing as fantastic as I was hoping. And I used older seed again because I'm trying to reuse what I had and make sure it's all viable and put it out there. And the seed that I had in the packages just wouldn't germinate that well. But then there was some purple pole bean seeds that I had saved in a refrigerator and they have just shot off. They are doing fantastic and just growing like crazy. So there it is on the center bamboo pole and they're coming along over here on the bottom. And we'll scoot around there. And then this one is really doing well, kind of wrapping around. It's probably about four to five feet tall right now. So doing really great at this point. Um, I was a little concerned for a while, but I have not had a whole lot of germination out of, say, the uh, bush beans, so I'm a little concerned about that. I was hoping to have two different types of beans growing, and those are not really happening as well as I was hoping. So here's kind of what the vegetable garden looks like from outside the vegetable garden. We got the fencing up and around because deer were coming around. Um, deer have been a constant problem every single year when we tried to grow things. One year I planted out 50 extra tomato plants and they were gone the next day. They were just little ones, but it was not a fun experience. Over here outside the vegetable garden we planted hot peppers. So we got some serranos here, we got some jalapenos over here, and in between those we have the trombetta squash. This one gets massive and I'm really excited how well it's doing. We're gonna grow it up the pole. I think I mentioned that before in a previous video up the pole and then across the pole so it will um, be vertical gardening so to speak and then over here see that one's doing really well also then in here I've just used the grass clippings from the garden to cover up and hopefully reduce the amount of Bermuda grass problems that we've got right in that direction And here's a little problem that you need to take care of if you ever see it. These are probably a squash bug type egg. Uh, it's one of those true bugs here. But all you got to do when you see that, usually they're on the underside of leaves. But all you have to do, and I'll see if I can do this with one hand, is scrape these off the leaves. Once they're removed from the leaves, they're not going to regrow. Uh, they're going to be gone. They're going to be down in the ground. They're not even going to germinate. So you will be perfectly safe. Just kind of rub them out, rub them off, and the larvae are not going to be able to survive after that. So just use that for your squash bug maintenance. And look, there's some more under that leaf right there. This is usually kind of where you find them. And that's why I say you need to go out and do your squash bug inspections and things. And be careful because I just ripped that leaf a little bit. But you check them out. Um, if you do see them germinate, spritz some neem oil on the bugs themselves and you should be okay with it um, or insecticidal soap something like that would work against squash bugs I never recommend going to something as hardcore as seven dust I just don't like that stuff in my garden I think it's probably overkill in most cases so I try to stick with the organic solutions so I cut back this area earlier today, and mostly because it was being completely overtaken with the Lunaria, uh, which produces these little seed pods. It's a biannual, so the first year it produces a plant, second year it produces flower and then seed. But we got tons of this little seed. It's called money plant because it kind of looks like a silver dollar might be. And too bad it's not a real money plant. I could use that. But, so could we all. Anyway, but right here, I'm going to do something else here, and I hadn't decided exactly what. I've got a couple of heucheros that were here that have not been treated very nicely because of that Lunaria. It just completely shaded them out, and these actually like a little bit of sunshine. That's a southern comfort there, I believe. So I just kind of made a big pile of the Lunaria. We'll collect some of the seed, and then the rest of it we'll just compost. We don't really need all that seed and that much of a plant to grow. Then over here, pastas are looking fantastic. 
blooming one of our oak leaf hydrangeas is doing really well beautiful foliage on it of course we got some vines creeping in there's always something to do and this hosta here I'm really not sure it was supposed to be Empress Wu but is not growing nearly like it was supposed to. Empress Wu is supposed to be like a five foot wide hosta plant and this certainly is not really done that in three years. It really does not look that different. Um, kind of disappointed with that one. That's Paul's Glory I believe. And then these are just typical regular hostas there. Cross a Regal is one of my favorites. I love the form on it and the shape. And now over here on some of these, we got a little bit more of the lime look, which are really cool. Somewhere here we've got guacamole. I'm not sure which one it is now. I've lost track of these hostas, but there's the Annabelle hydrangea, which is looking really nice. It's had a really good year. Definitely want to take some cuttings of that after it's done blooming and see if I can get a few more of these to grow. And then massive leaves from these hostas here. You know, hostas always have slug problems. That's probably what that is there, but usually if it's not too bad, they can recover just fine. Down over here is a ground cover. That's Pachysandra. It does look really like the spread. You'll notice here that it's mixed in with a couple other things that are less desirable, like the uh, Virginia creeper. That's what that is there. Now we got some weed trees coming in, like the hackberries and stuff like that now let's spin around check out the japanese painted fern it is doing really nicely and if you look underneath the fern leaves you may see these tiny little dots on things and i'm not seeing it on this one but those are not bugs those are actually the spores that they produce and that's how ferns reproduce that's kind of like their version of seeds so you look for that and you might be getting some more ferns eventually but i don't have any on mine here Solomon seal, the other oak leaf hydrangea, and I need to trim it back quite a bit over here toward the front so we open up some more light into the shady area. And then our hydrangea. I love the lace cap hydrangeas, they are my favorites. And then here, this Japanese maple and the arbor now on the arbor we are actually getting some nice looking little grapes that are appearing let me show you here you got to watch for grapes because they get a black rot that gets on them and it's a fungal disease so if you spray them a little bit do some neem oil and stuff on them that can really help um, i did that the other day and it looks like this one's getting a little something on it Almost looks like a bug problem. Caterpillar eating into it. Let's see if I can focus that. So, but it's doing great. We've got a lot of grapes coming on this one, and there's another grapevine there in the back that are both doing really well. Cone flowers are one of my favorite flowers to have in the garden because they attract a lot of great pollinators. Uh, plus, when they eventually go to seed, they're great for birds. The finches love them. This one here, I believe, is from the Pow Wow Wild Berry series. And I've got some others that are just regular cone flowers. Let me show you some of those. This cone flower's got more of a white petal on it. It could be related to the white swan variety. Um, or it could be because it's in a little bit more shade. I've noticed that when they have more shade, the petals tend to be more pale. But we've got quite a few of those popping out around these redbud trees that we've got. Up in this entire bed, we've got cone flowers. We've got the black and blue salvia, which has just finished blooming over here. And we got some more cone flowers up here. This didn't always used to be in the shade like this. In fact, it used to be wide open and sunny. And it's really time to get some of these things changed and moved to different places. See, that one is pink. And then these, that one's a little pale pink, and then they get whiter. 
a lot of variation in cone flowers. So these cone flowers are up near the street in our mailbox area. They're pretty much just the perfect flower. They're perennial and they do have some medicinal uses, although I won't get into that with this video. In this front bed, we've got this creeping phlox, which is down on the, the mulch layer over there, and it blooms really nicely in the spring. This is a plant I just pull up every time. It's sweet autumn clematis. It grows everywhere, all the time. It self sows and it's just very invasive, so I always pull that out if I can. And then over here, it is daylily time. So we've got a lot of beautiful daylilies happening here, and I believe this one's called Red Volunteer. Crepe Myrtle's got a little damage this year, but this one's coming back fine. Lots of dark foliage on it, and I forget its name, but it's got this dark burgundy foliage and white flowers when it blooms. So a month ago, this was looking really nice. This is a Coreopsis, but now it's all gone to seed. So now it's time to go ahead and get these deadheads out of here. Toss the seed, and that's what it kind of looks like. It looks like little ticks. That's where it gets its alternative name, tick seed. See those right there are the seeds from Coreopsis. So I'm just going to sprinkle that here in this garden and let it grow. And I need to come back, collect some seed, spread it out and about, and then deadhead this and let it regrow so it can flower again. Now here's an area I need to really clean up good. I've got lots of crazy stuff happening here. This is a fig tree, and these are hops. And hops are a vine, and they're called a vine because they're not an actual vine. You know, a vine will send out tendrils. This will wrap around poles and things. It's got this really coarse uh, stem to it that's kind of sticky, and so they will grab onto a lot of different things. But I need to get this off of the fig tree so the fig tree can grow because the hops vine can really take over. Um, plus I got some blackberries that are popping up, some wild stuff. So I need to take care of this area that's on my to-do list here coming soon. Please excuse the birds, they're being kind of cranky today. So this year I've kind of concentrated on doing the vegetable garden more so than the ornamental gardens. And part of the reason of that is because we don't really want to be going out too much. We don't really want to be spending a lot of money these days because we're concerned about things that are happening in the economy and the world in general. Uh, so we're trying to keep everything on a lower end budget, uh, not spend stuff on things we don't need, like flowers, really. I mean, I love them. I love playing in the garden and digging in the dirt and putting flowers and plants and stuff like that in but I'd rather have that tomato garden growing really great and, and be able to process those tomatoes and save them over the winter. So that's kind of what my goal has been is to really make sure that the vegetable garden is producing well. And we are seeing some good results from it with the zucchini, the squash, the peppers, the tomatoes. It looks pretty good. We need to get some other things started, probably go ahead and pre-start some kale and stuff like that now indoors. That way we can bring it out later. Uh, that dinosaur kale looks really good and it's really tasty so I, I really want to have some more of that growing. Anyway, that's it for this video today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing what my Tennessee garden looks like right now at the end of June. And if you don't mind, hit the like button and please subscribe. I'd love to have you along and show you more of our garden as it progresses throughout the year. And, you know, there's going to be some few tips and things like that along the way. So I uh, hope to make it worth your while. And, you know, again, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you later.